Hi, I'm Colleen Sheehan, and this is Next Generation Classics. And I'm here to show you why classic cars are just as amazing as modern supercars. And I'm gonna show you with this 1967 P4. some pretty steep competition when it comes to what is the most beautiful car ever built. But it's hard to argue that the Pininfarina designed 330 P4 is definitely near if not at the top of that list. And not only is it absolutely stunning, but it has such massive historical significance. So as many people know, Ferrari was dominant at Le Mans. They won everything in from 60 to 65. Then in 1966, Ford swept in and pretty much annihilated them. So Ferrari really had to make up for that loss. And they came up with the P4 and it really did what it was supposed to do. It beat Ford at their home track at Daytona and got a 1-2-3 win. Now in 1967, it did lose at Le Mans again and Ford won that year, but the Ferrari P4 did come in third and second place. So they made up for their loss in 1966. Technology today is of course drastically different than it was in 1967. But when you think about this car, it was 450 horsepower and fuel injected and it, had about, it weighed about 1,750 pounds. So it was just a rocket ship. I mean, these cars are so lightweight and nimble and they're amazing. Now, Sadly, they weren't able to race in 1968 because the rules of racing changed. So in 67, you were allowed to have a four liter engine, but in 1968, they changed those rules and dropped it down to only a three liter engine. So the era of this car came to an end. A real Ferrari 330 P4 is probably worth about $50 million today. And there's not really a question why, because there was only three of them ever built and they were massively successful. I mean, they are literally a piece of history. So there's no surprise that they have a massive price tag. Now this car is a replica and it is extremely well built. It was built by Rod Tempero out of New Zealand. And there are differences in replicas. So you get with Ferrari replicas, if we're talking about the highest quality Ferrari replicas, there's two basic kinds. You have your 250 GTOs or SWBs or California Spiders. And those cars are a little more simple to build just because you use a donor car. So you will get like a Ferrari 250 GTE or a 330 2 plus 2 and use the chassis and drivetrain from that car to make the donor car. Whereas something like a P4, there is no such thing as a donor car for a car like this. So everything has to be hand built, the chassis, everything. There's nothing to use. And so they're a lot more difficult to build. So finding one that is very accurate in how it's built, where it has the right lines and everything is very difficult. And this car and Rod Tempero does an amazing job with that. So this is definitely one of the more accurate replicas. It even has a Ferrari 400i engine that has been converted to carbureted. So as you might know, I love talking about how Ferrari names things. And with the 330 P4, 330 stood for 330 cc's per cylinder times the 12 cylinders. And then P4 was their fourth version of their prototype racing cars. Uh, now this car, as I mentioned, it does have the 400i engine, which has been converted to carbureted, uh, but it also has a Z gearbox. And what I find interesting, so Ferrari made a gearbox in-house up until uh, the P2. And after that, they went to a ZF gearbox. And now this is not the exact same type of gearbox that they used on the P4, but it is very similar. So it does have, as a replica, it does have the correct kind of Ferrari engine, uh, ZF gearbox like they used to have. And it was built out of all aluminum, all alloy bodied, handcrafted in New Zealand. So when you're looking at the replicas like the 196 and the P3s and P4s, um, finding one like this where it's the correct kind of parts is hard to find. And those are the most valuable and the most sought after because they're just the, the most accurate and the, the best built cars.
I've driven quite a few different replicas in my time, and there's lots of different levels, uh, not only in build quality, but also in usability. And some of them are really difficult to drive, uh, especially at low speeds. The nice thing about this car is it's actually quite user friendly. So it is something that the clutch isn't too heavy. It is a fairly progressive clutch. Uh, and it is something that I could see anyone pretty much able to take it to a Cars and Coffee or take it on the track. So it's something that you could really use. And the best part is it does have a title and plates, so it is street legal and able to drive on the street. So you don't have to worry, you could buy it and take it to your Cars and Coffee with no problem. Now, one thing that I know might worry some people is all the P4s originally were right-hand drive with a right-hand shift, but this car is left-hand drive with a left-hand shift. And really, left-hand shift is not that difficult. Uh, it's the same shift pattern that you're used to, you know, first, second, third, fourth, and it's, it's really intuitive. So um, I haven't driven a left-hand drive or left-hand shift car in quite a little while now, and it just came very natural. It's not that hard. If you've never driven one before, it's something that you, you know, get used to it for a few minutes and then you're like, oh, this makes complete sense. And this car also, we got here and we did the cold starts on the cars and it fired right up. And it's currently being maintained by Ian Lacey Racing here in Utah at UMC. And he has done such a fantastic job with these cars. I mean, we've had this one and the Lola we've been using today, and they've both done everything right. So it's really a car that is just ready to go. The P4 really was the end of an era. I mean, Ferrari was so dominant throughout the early 60s. And then when they changed all the rules in 1968, Ferrari actually boycotted for a year and didn't race in 68. Then they came back in 1969 with the 312P. So that was the end of the 330P1234 era. And it's such an incredible historic car. And so there's really no wonder why it's worth upwards of $50 million today. But I know to normal people that is far out of reach. And what I've always really appreciated about replicas is you get a real Ferrari engine, the same type of gearbox they used to use, uh, the same basic experience as a real car, but for a fraction of the price. And I personally feel a lot more comfortable driving something like this than I would a $50 million car anyways. So I hope you guys can agree with me that classic cars can be just as amazing and exciting as modern supercars. Please help me to preserve the passion for these amazing cars and stay tuned because we got a lot more videos coming very soon.